Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another tutorial for audio programming for the beginners. And today we're going to talk about one of the fundamental aspects of digital signal processing, which is aliasing. Now, as we discussed our last tutorial, we have this thing called the sampling rate. So when you open up any of your digital audio workstations, such as Ableton or Pro Tools, and a lot of times you go into the settings and you see uh, a setting called the sampling rate. Uh, a lot of times it's set to 44,100. Okay, and what that means is that when we're recording from an analog domain into the digital domain, okay, something like my voice or a guitar or any any music, that the digital audio workstation is sampling my voice or that instrument at a rate of 44,100 times a second. Okay, now the Nyquist frequency, just to review, is the maximum representable frequency based off of what our sampling rate is. Okay, and the Nyquist frequency says that the rate that we, the maximum frequency that we can represent is half of our sampling rate. So if we're at a sampling rate of 44,100, then our, uh, our Nyquist frequency would be 22,050 hertz. Okay, anything above that would be aliasing. Okay, and so what we're going to do is just give a little, just kind of demonstration of what happens when a signal aliases. So uh, what I've got here is I've got just a little sketch. This is based uh, roughly on some code from one of my tutors at Goldsmiths University, Rebecca Feebrink, uh, who's a great authority on machine learning. She speaks all over the world. Um, she's a really great teacher. And um, so I've just drawn this really quick rough sketch just to kind of show you what happens when our signal is aliasing. So let's say that we were singing, let's say this was a sample of my voice. Okay, this is actually a sine tone, which is a really pure tone. But let's just, let's just say, for example, sake that this is a signal of my voice. Okay. Now, if our sampling rate was too low, okay, we would be taking, uh, we, we may just take a sample of my voice at this point here and this point here represented by the black dots. Okay. Now, as you can see, that's not, very many points that we can uh, that we can base our our signal off of okay and so what would happen is that because our signal can't be represented accurately it would be represented in another way okay which is going to be shown by this other sine wave which I'm going to draw now okay so as you can see what's happening is that the wave is actually at a whole different frequency. It's completely different than the wave that we intended to have, okay? So just to go back, so this is what was, this is what was sung in. There was, it was sampled at two points, and this is the wave that we end up with, okay? And that's what's called aliasing. That's what happens when we go above our Nyquist frequency. Okay, so I have another little quick um, little thing that I drew up real quick uh, in C++. Don't worry about any of the code. This is for beginners, so uh, I'm assuming that you don't know anything um, about any of this, but you don't have to worry. Okay, so let me just compile this. Okay, so in this, uh, in this little demonstration, basically I'm able to play um, a sine tone. Okay, you might want to turn your headphones down a little bit. This might be a little bit loud depending on the frequency. Okay, so. Okay, so if we look at this top number here, this is the top, the top number is what frequency that we're actually at, okay? So if I, so if I play this frequency here, you're gonna hear a frequency of 321 hertz, okay? Now, as I move my mouse to the right, I've mapped my mouse to uh, go up the frequency spectrum. So as I move my mouse to the right, you can see that the frequency goes up and up and up and up. Okay, so my sound, my sound card doesn't allow me to go at a sampling rate of lower than um, 44,100 hertz. Okay, and um, so what I've done is I've actually, I've actually mapped the frequency to go from um, 20 hertz, which is the lowest range of human hearing, 
and I've gone all the way to the right screen, right hand side of the sketch to 44,100 hertz, which is way above the range of human hearing. Okay, we can most of us only can, can only hear up to 18,000 hertz uh, or less for me. Uh, so. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up the frequency spectrum and we're going to see what happens uh, as we go above the Nyquist, which is 22,050 hertz. Okay, so so here we have 400 hertz. That's 3,000 hertz there. Okay, 17,000 hertz. I can't hear that. Some of you might be able to hear that. Okay. And now as we approach at 22,050 hertz. So now we're above, we're above 22,050 hertz. We're, abro we're above the maximum representable frequency that we're able to hear with our sound card, okay? Now let's just go back, let's continue to go to the right of the screen and see what happens, okay? Okay, so now uh, you can see that as I went above the Nyquist rate, it actually, the, the frequency actually descended back down, okay? And this is exactly what we depicted with the other sketch in which, um, in which our, our, the actual frequency can't be represented, okay? And so... So when we're when we're above our Nyquist frequency, as you can see with this with this number here, the second number, this is showing um, what the actual frequency is that you're actually hearing. It actually mirrors, okay? So so you're going up, 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 up to the Nyquist frequency, and then as you go um, as you go past the Nyquist frequency up to the actual sampling rate, then what happens is that the frequency goes back down. Okay, so let me just do a demonstration of that for you again. So we got... Okay, and now we're above the Nyquist frequency, and now we're going to continue to go to the right. Until we get to... Um, until we get to the actual sampling rate, which is 44,100 hertz. Now, if we continue to go to the right, if we, if we were able to do that, then you, what you would find is that the frequency would actually go up again. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, so, so that is what aliasing is, and that's what happens when um, you're trying to sample a signal and, you don't, and, and you're not um, taking enough sample points and what happens is that you get these weird kind of frequencies that are happening in your um, in your signal. And that's where I'm going to end for today. Uh, for next lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about the sine wave, just break down what the sine wave is and some of its properties. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.